All right, let's take our Bibles. Turn to Ruth chapter number one. Ruth chapter number one. The story is told about a foolish old farmer who one day concluded that the oats that he had fed his mule for years were simply costing him too much. It must be Biden Bidenomics. So, so he, he hatched a plan. He, he mixed a little sawdust in with the feed, then a little more the next day, and even more the next, and each time reducing the amount of oats in the mix. Mule didn't seem to notice the gradual change, so the farmer thought things were fine and kept decreasing the portion of oats. But weeks later, on the day he finally fed the poor beast nothing but sawdust, the mule finished his meal and promptly fell over dead. Now that may seem like a silly story, and it is, but it can serve as a parable of the backslider. The believer who slips further and further away from God through sin or neglect. Though we know our souls cannot survive on spiritual sawdust, we may well convince ourselves that, uh, you know, just missing a little bit, a uh, little, little less spiritual food won't be missed, and over time the proportion of the uh, sawdust increases while the oats of biblical truth gradually disappear. And before long, the change is complete and our starved, sawdust, stuffed spiritual life collapses. And, uh, Naomi never meant for that to happen to her. No one ever does, okay? But she wound up so very far away from where the Lord wanted her to be. And she found herself alone except for her daughter-in-law, Ruth, she had the other daughter-in-law until she decided to head back to Bethlehem, Judah. This passage is all about Naomi coming to her senses, making her way back home to Bethlehem, returning to the place of God's blessing. And I thank the Lord that even though we may stray from Him uh, and our life becomes difficult because of that, because of our wayward condition, uh, he is ready to receive us back. We'll just repent and return. And I've called this study tonight, Returning Home Empty. Returning Home Empty. Um, we see, uh, and we're going to begin in verse number 19, we see the arrival in Bethlehem. Let's go ahead and read the verses, verse 19 through 22. That's what we'll be dealing with. And so it says, So they too, talking about uh, Naomi and Ruth, they too went until they came to Bethlehem. And it came to pass that when they were come to Bethlehem, that all the city was moved about them. And they said, Is this Naomi? And she said unto them, Call me not Naomi, call me Mara, for the Almighty hath dealt very bitterly with me. I went out full the Lord hath brought me home again empty. Why then call ye me Naomi, seeing the Lord hath testified against me, and the Almighty hath afflicted me? So Naomi returned, and Ruth the Moabitess, her daughter-in-law, with her, which returned out of the country of Moab, and they came to Bethlehem in the beginning of barley harvest. So we see the arrival in Bethlehem there in the first part of verse 19. They, they too went until they came to Bethlehem. That trip from Moab to Bethlehem would take about seven to ten days, depending on how, many, how much you could log uh, walking. But it would have required them to cross the Jordan River and to climb upwards of 2,000 plus feet in elevation to reach Bethlehem. It was kind of a, kind of a difficult trip. Of course, it would have been easier for them to stop short of the city, but they continued until they were where they were supposed to be. Repentance is the same way. We should, shouldn't should stop until we've come all the way back. If you don't know, return to the Lord, return all the way back. Don't hold anything back. There's no record of their conversation as they traveled. I'm sure there was probably at least some conversation at times, but... Don't you know that there was some quiet contemplation on that trip? Um, Ruth wondering, 
what she was in store for. And of course, Naomi wondering how things had changed since uh, uh, she was there previously. It's been over 10 years at this point. We see Naomi was finally back in the city of God's praise. Remember we said Judah means praise. Beth went, went back to Bethlehem, Judah. Bethlehem, Judah was the place that the Lord had chosen for His name to be honored and exalted. But Naomi had left the place the Lord had originally chosen for her, and consequently there was no praise in her heart when she was in Moab. Now, that child of God who is away from the Father's house can't really have a heart of praise, nor can they live a life that is honoring to God. So Naomi was back in the city of God's praise, finally back there. Naomi was finally back in the city of God's presence. Uh, verse 6 that we saw previously uh, said that they heard how that the Lord had visited His people in Bethlehem and giving them bread. They heard about that. And while Naomi was in Moab, we know she was far from the Lord's manifest presence. What she? The manifest presence of the Lord. We never get out of the Lord's presence. But we're out of His manifest presence. We're in a place of, of blessing. You know, they were too outside of that place of blessing. When a saint is away from the Lord's will for his life, he can't enjoy the manifest presence of God. Uh, you see that in the life of Jonah. Uh, when you read in Jonah 1, 3, that Jonah rose up to to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Anytime a child of God tries to get away from the presence of the Lord, that is a, that's a silly statement. Isn't it? You can't get away from the presence of the Lord. You can get away from His manifest presence. You can get outside of His blessing, but you're not going to leave where He don't uh, can't touch you. And, of course, He touched uh, Jonah just the same way uh, that He was able to touch uh, Elimelech and his family there in Moab. Now, when a believer returns to the Lord, he or she can once again enjoy the blessed presence of the Lord. Uh, I like what Psalm 1611 says. It says, Thou wilt show me the path of life, and thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. She's back in the presence of the Lord. Naomi was finally back in the city of God's praise, in the, in the uh, city of God's presence, and we see Naomi was finally back in the city of God's provision. God's provision. Remember we said that Bethlehem means house of bread? House of bread? And it was in the city of Bethlehem, Judah, that Naomi would find the best of God's provisions. It was there where she could be fed. Now, they didn't have anything, to, any way to buy bread. They didn't have any, uh, any way to have any provisions, but God was going to provide. And that's the way it is with the saint. God's best blessings are reserved for those who will uh, come back to Him, stay close to Him where He's working. Uh, so Naomi was finally back in the city of God's provision, and we'll see that next week uh, as the Lord provides for her and Ruth. Naomi was finally back in the city of God's people. God's people. She returned to a place of kindred spirits. These were like-minded people. Uh, she didn't belong in Moab. Yeah, Moab, a bunch of heathen. She didn't belong there. In Moab, she was different. In Bethlehem, she belonged. Uh, so, uh, it is with the wayward child of God. We don't belong away from God, do we? We don't belong away from God. We, we belong in the place of His praise, His presence, His provision, and His people. And we're, we're never going to fit in anywhere else. Uh, and we'll never find what we need anywhere else. We'll never really be, if you know the Lord, you're never going to be happy anywhere else. Um, so we see the arrival in Bethlehem. And we see the announcement in Bethlehem. We read there uh, where it says there that all the city was moved about them. There in um, uh, verse number 19. 
It says all the city was moved about him. It means that the city was disturbed and in an uproar. <laughs> um, Naomi's return to Bethlehem. Think about it. She, she returned to Bethlehem without her husband, without her sons, broke, and in the company of a stranger. A Gentile at that. Not just a Gentile, but one from a cursed tribe. <laughs> You know, from a cursed people, the, the a Moabitess. Um, so Naomi's return to Bethlehem in that way made news all over town. We see that Naomi, first of all, she, she spoke of God's providence. Uh, she did acknowledge that the Lord is the one that brought her back there in verse 21. She says, uh, I went out full and the Lord hath brought me home again empty. Uh, why, why call ye me Naomi? See, the Lord, here's, here's where she acknowledges the Lord. The Lord hath testified against me. The Almighty hath afflicted me. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the, the Lord brought her home again, didn't he? There, there in verse 21, um, the Lord hath brought me home again empty, is what she says. She, she told of how the Lord worked to bring her home. Don't you wonder how many times she had to tell the story about the death of her husband and the death of her sons? You know when something happens to you and folks are wanting to know well, what happened and where, 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 your, where your boys at? You had two boys. Where, what happened to them? Or, you know, where's your husband? What happened to Elimelech? Um, there's no telling how many times she had to tell the story. But Bethlehem Judah was still home where she belonged, she was like the prodigal son who said in Luke 15, I will return to my father's house. She had returned back to where she belonged. And we can try to run from the Lord, but we can't hide. And again, we can all we got to do is look at Jonah. He ran. But could he hide? The Lord knew exactly where he was at. Uh, so Naomi spoke of God's providence. The Lord had brought me home again. The Lord... Um, we see that Naomi spoke, uh, spoke of God's punishment also. There in verse 20, she says, The Almighty hath dealt very bitterly with me. And then in verse 21, she said, The Lord hath testified against me, and the Almighty hath afflicted me. Now, uh, seems to have a little bit of an attitude problem, doesn't she? She seems to blame it all on the Lord, but we know uh, and she had to know that all that happened to her was a result of the poor choices of her and her husband. And her words reveal her heart. She said there in verse 21, I went out full, and the Lord hath brought me home again empty. Now, uh, she said, you know, don't call me Naomi. They were, they were, is this Naomi? And she said, you know, don't call me Naomi. Her name, Naomi, meant pleasant. Uh, she said, call me Mara. That means bitter. She was bitter. She freely admits that she's bitter. Evidently, Elimelech was a wealthy man when he left Bethlehem for Moab. She went out full. Okay? I think they had some means about them. But she can't return home empty. She went out full and came home. The Lord brought me home empty. Um, the Lord will fill us up, but the plan of the devil is to empty us out. God knows how to get our attention. I, I wish believers would understand this very simple concept. God can get your attention. Okay? Uh, if you're not doing right, He can get your attention. Unfortunately, for some, it takes a complete emptying before God gets their attention. Sometimes God only needs to leave us to ourselves and let sin do its emptying work in our lives because that's what sin will do. Sin will empty you out. It'll empty you out. Proverbs 1.31 says, They eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. You know, but it's talking about how sin works in people's lives. If we're not where we should be with the Lord, let me ask a question. What will it take for the Lord to get your attention? If you're not where you need to be, what will it take for the Lord to get your attention? I've seen the Lord do some heavy-handed 
stuff to folks who needed it, and they still didn't get it. Still didn't get it. Um, and never, to this day, as, I, as far as I know, they're not back in the house of God. Um, third thing here we see, we see the anticipation in Bethlehem. The anticipation in Bethlehem. Verse number 22. So, so Naomi returned and Ruth the Moabitess, her daughter-in-law with her, which returned out of the country of Moab. And they came to Bethlehem in the beginning of barley harvest. That last phrase is really important here. It tells us the time of when she arrived back. This was a time uh, of blood. And I'll explain myself. The time of barley harvest was also uh, the time of the Passover. The Passover was a time of memorial of God's redemption. And it was a time to shed the blood of a lamb and commemorate the deliverance of God's people from Egypt, according to Exodus chapter number 12. I'm not going to turn there and read that. But you can read how the Lord set, set the uh, Passover uh, as a memorial and it was to be a continual memorial for God's people. This is a picture of coming home through the blood, the Passover is. And that's how we come home too. Uh, 1 John chapter number 1, verse number 7 says, But if we walk in the light, as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make Him a liar and His word is not in us. So, uh, when we come home, we come home through the blood. Amen. And I thank God that the blood of the Lamb is sufficient to take away uh, whatever sins. He take care of the sins of the wayward saint just as much as He can take care of the sins of the person that comes to him for salvation initially. So it was a time of blood. It was a time though, also of bounty. You know I mean, we're talking about all these people in Bethlehem. They're getting ready to harvest. They're, um, and this is a time when, uh, when you got an abundant harvest, the Feast of the first fruits. Um, I'm going to give you a, a passage here for you to read. It's a, it's a long passage, but uh, Leviticus 23. Now, spe specifically, specifically, I can't say specifically very well, but I can say. <laughs> specifically, Leviticus 23, verses 10 through 14, deal with the Feast of the First Fruits. Uh, you'll see in that chapter the Passover, unleavened bread, first fruits, Pentecost, trumpets. The Day of Atonement and the uh, Tabernacles or booths, and uh, those are in order that they came. And so, the uh, right after the Passover, you had the unleavened bread and the first fruits. Now, this was a time when the first of the barley harvest was offered in a wave offering before the Lord. You'll read that in verses 10 through 14 of Leviticus 23. It was waved before the Lord in gratitude for the harvest that was about to be reaped. Now, when the person brought the first fruits and the priest made the wave offering, that was honoring to the Lord and saying, this is just the first. There's more on the way, praise God. <laughs> you know, we, we're giving the Lord the first, the first fruits here. Jesus is presented as the first fruits from the dead in the New Testament. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, listen to verse number 20. It says, but now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. When Christ arose from the grave, it's like uh, resurrection is true. Resurrection happened. Hey, there are going to be more resurrected on the way. Amen. That's what we're waiting on, right? Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 23 says, but every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterward they are that are Christ at his coming. So we await that. So there was a time of blood, a time of bounty, and it was a time of beginning. I'm going to call this a new beginning, okay? A time of a new beginning for Naomi. Naomi wanted to be she wanted her name to be changed to Mara uh, because she, she, she didn't feel like she was pleasant anymore. She was bitter. 
But when the Holy Spirit mentions her in verse 22, after she said all that, He still calls her Naomi. Yeah. Amen. Still, she's still called Naomi there in verse 22. She may have been bitter in her heart, but the Lord had some pleasant blessings ahead for this woman and for Ruth. And the people ask the question in verse 19, Is this Naomi? I think, what do you think about this? The people of Bethlehem were amazed at her appearance and how her problems had affected her countenance. Sin always brings along trouble, doesn't it? It just does. Uh, sin will ride you hard and put you through the ringer, so to speak. And, and, uh, but the Lord was about to give her blessings and glories that uh, she could not have imagined. And while people may mourn over the troubles of the sinner, and well they should, um, we need to remember that there is joy in heaven over a sinner who repents. Amen? Joy in heaven. To Luke 15, verse 7. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. So we're going to leave off there for tonight. That's our Bible study. Next week, Lord willing, we're going to be taking a look at searching for grace. We'll be looking at the first three verses there of chapter number two. Searching for grace. Ruth goes on a search for a field that she, somebody will let her glean out of. And uh, we'll take a look at what all that means next week, Lord willing. Amen. All right. Uh, this, uh, that's our Bible study. We'll set that aside, pull back on our prayer list. We'll pray for the needs, and we'll be dismissed with this prayer.